Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. We are going to talk today about developing water budget for utilities. DCSC um, has realized the usefulness and need of developing water budget programs at water agencies. It is uh, imperative to do so due to the drought conditions and possible water crisis that looms large here in California. So we examine various methods to conserve water by working closely with several of our clients and have come up with a lot of different options. And then finally, after doing a lot of uh, project work, we found an optimum path. Based on that, we developed this application from those insights we received during our explorations. This webinar will highlight some of the key findings and will answer some of the questions you uh, have and we've had during our experiments with water budget. So what we'll do is first of all we'll introduce DCSE, then we'll talk about water conservation, then we'll walk through the details of water budget implementation, and finally we'll talk about the water budget application and how to use that. But before we do that let's introduce DCSE. DCSC is a data management and GIS firm. We work mainly with municipalities and water waste water industry. We do a lot of geostrategic plans, geodatabase design and maintenance, and data migration. And then of course we also do a lot of integrations and application development. And at the same time we do a lot of water solutions. We develop a lot of water uh, management solutions like groundwater management system, then demand forecasting and master plans and hydraulic models and of course water budget. So these are some uh, DCSC clients as you can see um, mainly water and wastewater agencies. So what is it that drives water conservation at your organization is the main question that we are going to answer today. Is it a regulation such as SBX 7-7 which talks about 20% reduction by the year 2020? Or is it a little more fundamental where you ask yourself the question whether the need is an unmet need or an unnecessary need? Which is when you allocate water budget for residents based on successful models and algorithms. So let's get the terminology straight and define how much is actually enough. For that, let's look at three different definitions. The first one is water budget. What is water budget? Water budget is the volume of water that's allocated for each billing period. It's very simple. A natural question that some of you might ask is what happens if we exceed that allocated budget and more importantly, how do we decide what should be my allocated budget? Well, let's consider this suburban example. So let's uh, see uh, Mrs. Van de Kamp and Mrs. Solis. Mrs. Van de Kamp owns almost twice the size of Mrs. Solis's area and has twice the number of individuals in her house. But both of them get the same amount of water. Let's say 25,000 gallons per month. Naturally, Van de Kamp is always going to exceed that amount and she is going to be penalized for that. So the question is, is that equitable and fair? Well, that is tiered rate, which is not necessarily that equitable and fair, but still it's being used widely and that's been the most used uh, rate system. The third definition is what we're going to talk about the most, which is water budget based tiered rate, where we use water budget to set, to set consumption blocks for tiered rates, which is a little bit more fair and a lot more equitable. So now let's go and see the typical segments. Now just because you are allocated a certain amount of water does not mean you have to spend it all. You can be efficient and use only 40% of the total allocated budget or you can be wasteful and be penalized by a higher rate on your water use. 
Now these are typical classification of water users against their allocated water budget. So now that you have started developing an interest in this fair and equitable method, it might be the right time to introduce the formal definition of water budget. It's volumetric allotment of water to customers based on customer specific characteristics and conservative resource standards to promote water use efficiency. Or in simple words, allocate enough water for an efficient user without forcing change in the lifestyle. This is going to promote efficiency. This would not reward wasteful users. So why implement water budget? Well, the agencies who have successfully implemented water budget based programs have realized stable revenue stream so much so that they can fund conservation programs from the revenue streams. There's always been a decrease in residential water use whenever you have a water budget program. Not only that, the landscape water use also declines. So on an average, residential water use goes down by 24% while landscape goes down by 49% because people become mature and people tend to use the resource says much more carefully. Once you have the customers collaborate, they are always more satisfied because this water budget method is more fa is fairer and more equitable as we discussed before. And with that said, there's also a decreased infrastructure and capacity requirements because now now a smaller quantity of water is getting used and that's why the constraints are less and and so the maintenance required is less and then finally there's also a readiness in responding to drought emergencies let's talk about when to implement water budget well if you're thinking you should implement it now you should ask yourself whether there's commitment, coordination, and education at all levels in your organization. You should also try and identify whether customers are accepting that allocations are going to be fair and equitable. You should also see that infrastructure in your organization is sufficient to maintain the water budget because you need a GIS you need some advanced billing system you need a lot of different things you need the water side as well as the IT side to make sure that such an implementation is successful then you have to also identify whether your staffing is adequate and you have enough skills with your staff so as to respond to all the information to respond to initial customer inquiries and uh, of course there are lots of different things where you need the staff to be skilled enough to manage customers and the final point is the timing of the implementation because if it's during a peak season you might not necessarily be fully focused on this new program so it's a good good thinking to have it during an off peak season so how is water budget calculated well water budget is the summation of indoor water use and outdoor water use. Typically what we do is in residential land use cases we either do like a flat allocation or we do per capita allocation. So for flat allocation we can assign 6,000 to 7,000 gallons per month for a residence or we can do like a 60 to 70 gallons per person day. The more crucial of the two is the outdoor budget where you need the GIS data, evapotranspiration data and a lot of other factors. Uh, the formula that you see is the formula that we use to calculate water budget. Evapotranspiration factor identifies the amount of water that is evaporating or transpiring due to the weather. Irrigation efficiency, i.e. 
depends on the infrastructure or design of tools used for irrigation. It also takes care of runoff and groundwater recharge. And a landscape or area, you can either calculate that from GIS parcels or use an approximation such as 45% of the total lot size. This is a quick snapshot of how we use GIS to measure landscape areas. And this is the website where we gather the ET values. This is the CIMIS website in California. For water budget management, this is the life cycle. First of all, you need to identify a strategy and do a proof of concept or a pilot study. And then once that is done, the outcome of that can be used to generate the rate structure or it can also be used to develop the water budget management application where you have the water budget calculations like we walk through you have the data ma maintenance considerations you have variance management you have a client dashboard and then finally and Im very important is the billing system integration because you want to compare the actuals versus the budgets and after that you also need to do a client outreach and education campaign very important for a water budget implementation life cycle before we go into the water budget application just wanted to talk a little bit about the water budget base rates where you have the total water consumed by each segment multiplied by a rate for that segment and that equals the fixed cost the variable cost and the desired profit by agency so with that formula you can find out the rates and you can actually keep finding out rates for subsequent years and for subsequent water budgets. So this is the water budget management um, application where you can see the unassigned and assigned and variances. So unassigned are those that have not been assigned a water budget yet, either because they're new accounts or they're move in move out cases. And here you can see the APN, lot size, these come from GIS, then you have landscaped area, again GIS year built, indoor allocation. Here you have the formula, you have the parameters for the formula that we had. You have a transpiration, crop coefficient, irrigation efficiency, uh, indoor allocation. And then here you can see for each period, the person is either efficient, inefficient, uh, excessive, and you can see the colors here, color coded. This is the client interface. Here the client logs in and he or she can see whether they are excessive user, what percentage of allocation they have used, what is the color code they're in. They can pretty much see the indoor allocation and outdoor allocation, actual use, and so they can get a feel for where they are. And this is again the same idea, their allocation, their actual water use, you know, the, the whole shebang of how they're doing on their allocated budget. And so that brings us to the end of this webinar. And if you have any questions, this is my contact information. Please feel free to call me or email me and I'll be happy to answer any question you have. And thanks, thanks again for, uh, for today's webinar. You have a great day, guys.